All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, this time I'd like to call our March 15th Scrim School Board meeting to order. Six o'clock. Do a quick roll call, please. Uh, Director Ku. Hey, good evening. All right, uh, Director Jeffries. Hello, I'm here. All righty, Director Stoffer. Yes, uh, good evening. All right, uh, Director Pickens. Hello, good evening, sir. All right, good evening. All right, and I know we have Alyssa here with us. And Hello. Hi there. Good to see you tonight. And uh, do we have Olivia with us yet tonight? Yes, I am here. All Hello. right. Yay. And Dr. Prime. I am here. Thank you. Oh. All right. Thank you, everyone. Well, good to see everyone. And uh, if you could now join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Well, as we see, we are uh, still currently holding a virtual meeting this evening. So with that said, uh, just following typical protocols, uh, if you're on, please make sure that you have your mic muted and your camera off uh, unless speaking um, as board members or, or staff. And uh, this meeting is re being recorded at this time. All right. Wonder uh, do our um, student reps uh, have capability of seeing the uh, vision and mission statement? Alyssa, can uh, can you read that for us? Yeah, sure. All our right. vision statement is our community inspires and prepares each student to thrive. And our mission statement is in connection with our community, the Squim School District empowers staff to inspire hope and provide flexible, innovative learning opportunities in a safe and respectful environment so each student thrives. Thank you. All right, thank you. Olivia, can you uh, care to do our acknowledgement of the land we stand on tonight? Yes, of course. All right. We acknowledge the land we stand on. The Squim School District Administration and school buildings sit on the ancestral land of the Skalam people. While the Skalam traditionally come from one nation, history has led to the formation of these sovereign Skalam slash Klalam tribal governments. Lower Elwha Klalam tribe, Jamestown Skalam tribe, Port Gamble Skalam tribe. The district's primary partnership is with the Jamestown Skalam tribe. that initial consultation on the program and funding changes that may directly affect American Indian and Alaskan Native students as well as holistic service planning for students to remain successful in their educational journeys. Thank you. Thank you both of you. Thank you so much. All right. Next up, first uh, order of business uh, is the approval of our minutes for our March 1st and 4th and uh, special meeting and uh, policy meeting on the 10th. Mr. Chair, make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Thank you. We have a motion. Uh, do I have a second? I second it, Director Stoffer. All right, Director Stoffer seconds. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right, motion carries. Uh, next up, any changes to or additions uh, to our agenda? With no ch changes, do I have a motion to approve our agenda? Make a motion to approve. Thank you. We have a motion. And we have a second, Director Ku. Thank you. Any discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. All right, next up we have our consent agenda. Motion to approve. Thank you, Director Pickens. Do I have a second? I second it, Director Stauffer. All right, thank you, Director Stauffer. Any discussion? Go yes. Ahead, Director Stauffer? Yes, I just want to acknowledge uh, the band director, uh, Mr. Vern Foskett, who uh, has his uh, putting in for retirement and uh, He's been uh, a blessing here in our schools for several years and has uh, um, been known as a music man and has uh, taught and instilled some uh, great music in uh, a whole bunch of kids for many years and taken them on the many award winning trips um, around the Northwest and and uh, California also. So just uh, Fern is going to be uh, sorry to see you leave. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Director Stoffer. You sold my thunder. Uh, I was thinking the same thing when I read that uh, as well. Our Hall of Fame uh, music director, Vern Foskett, will, will be truly missed, but um, congratulations to him and uh, his future uh, life in retirement. So thank you. Anything else? All right, hearing none, uh, all those in favor, the consent agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right, motion carries. All right, at this time, we don't have any um, uh, comments to the board, but uh, just a reminder, if we do, if you do have comments at this time, um, send them in to either Tracy at T Norman at squimschools.org or to the school board at schoolboard at squimschools.org prior to the meeting. All right. Next up, we have our board representatives. So first up, we have our senior representative, Olivia Preston. Hello. All right. So I have to. For the high school, they would like to. I suggest students from our floral classes are working on the city baskets that will line the streets in the weeks to come. It's awesome to see how high school students contribute to what makes Squim such a. Great news. Good news has gone. Some good news has gone video. At the tail end of the last semester, the students generated the free coffee. Since that initial start, the students have grown their skills and enthusiasm under Ms. Reamer's guidance with other several staff also supporting their efforts. As last week came to end, the students launched their first video of their vision. Links to that third installment can be found on the SMS Facebook page on the first video. SMS coaches are in discussion around abbreviated athletics toe dip in April and make for all the grades at the middle school. With the high school success into phase three, we hope to give a broad group of students a chance to experience another element of what we offer behind the classroom at SMS. And then OPA one is at a separate. I apologize. Um, OPA would like to share at OPA third graders from Michelle's Canepa's classroom celebrated National Plant of Flower Day by planting flowers and placing them on the picnic benches and high school walkway. Way to go, third grade adventurers. Your contribution to our school community are outstanding. And that is all I have for us tonight. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Olivia. <laughs> all right, next up we have Alyssa Bibai. Okay, Helen Heller Elementary wanted to say that students and teachers are enjoying the return to specialist classrooms by students. That's music, PE, Success Academy, and library. With students back on campus, we are working on safety and successfully completed a shelter-in-place drill on February 23rd. We will have the chance to practice another type of drill at the end of this month. We celebrated National Education Support Professionals Week this week by recognizing the amazing work they do with a gift of goodies for each one. 
Grey Wolf Elementary would like to say Happy March. Our PTA held a meeting this week and we would like to thank them for their kind words about our school and our district. Last night, they decided to grant each of our teachers $50 to spend on culturally responsive reading books for their classroom libraries. This is very exciting news on the heels of the great March 5th Professional Development Day. Our building is excited to build on what we have learned from Dr. Renker, and we have made the commitment to begin transforming our classroom libraries to more fully reflect the children we serve. We would like to extend a big thank you to Meredith Arsenal and her staff for the great work they have done since break, supplying our kids with great breakfast, lunches, and five-day take-home bags. The importance of helping our kids avoid food insecurity is so important right now. Thank you. And lastly, we would like to report that we had an amazing week thanking our educational support staff. From flowers to popcorn and red box movies, to candies, to coffee, to words of praise. We respect and appreciate our paraeducators, secretaries, custodians, bus drivers, and food service staff. Once more, we would like to say thank you. Grey Wolf would not be the wonderful school it is without you and your hard work. We hope your week was amazing, knowing how much you are appreciated by our, by our students, our community, and your building administrators. That's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank you again, Alyssa. All right. Uh, next up, we have our uh, regular board communication. Um, uh, one thing just to discuss before we move on here is uh, that we have our day on the hill coming up. And I, I probably Director Stoffer talk a little bit about that. And I believe we've got Director Stoffer and Director Pickens that will be attending that as well. So we'll be in good hands and I appreciate your uh, taking that on and um, we'll we'll hear more, I'm sure, in a little bit. But uh, let's move over to Director Koo. All right, thank you, sir. Just uh, three quick items. Uh, first up, it's so good to see and hear our student reps, um, you know, in this crazy year, uh, just really appreciate your service to this board and then uh, having you Having you interact uh, the way you do in the district is very much appreciated. So uh, it kind of goes without saying, but I figured I'd just say it. Uh, number two, uh, just a shout out to the team. And I mean the whole district team. Um, really appreciate what everyone's been doing. I know there's been sacrifices going on. Um, I see a few of them on the call tonight. I know there's been accommodations that they've had to make. Uh, to make this happen uh, as as well as it can be for the time being. So um, as I was reflecting on uh, just things I'm appreciative of, that was something that came high in my mind. Um, I see you and uh, I, I appreciate everything y'all are doing to get our students back in our schools. And then third, I don't think I've used this bully pulpit to uh, say this yet, so I figured I might as well accompany it, is sincere and wide gratitude to the tribe for uh, uh, having our teachers uh, have the option to be vaccinated uh, before getting back in the buildings. And I don't need to belabor how important that is and uh, how important that is to our teachers, but thank you so much. Uh, just all the work there that they've done, <laughs> the leadership they've exerted. And um, yeah, it's, it's just very meaningful as we try to make uh, some sense of normalcy. Uh, amidst this chaos. So that's all I have tonight. Just happy to be here. Wonderful. Thank you, uh, Director Koo. And just a reminder, if you're attending uh, this evening, if you could please make sure that your mic is muted. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, all right. Next up, we have uh, Director Jeffries. Yeah, thank you. Um, I've enjoyed driving around town from time to time past the schools during the um, passing periods or recess and really enjoy seeing our students on the campus and hopefully uh, between the vaccinations and wearing masks and the community being very careful we can keep our numbers low especially here coming up uh, after spring break so we can continue to uh, open up the schools even more i think that's fantastic and that's exactly what the kids need and uh, we as the community need to do our part to uh, keep them safe by keeping the community safe. I um, attended 
a um, online webinar on on Friday the fifth, put on by the National School Board Associations on crisis, crisis management in education. I found it extremely uh, interesting and useful. Um, I passed the information on to the superintendent, and uh, that was uh, passed on to the school board. I encourage you to uh, take a look at, at the uh, documents by all means, but if you get a chance to at least um, listen to part of the uh, webinar, the video, and it gives you some sense of um, some ideas, considerations, concerns, how uh, the district high handles crisis management um, as we move forward. And other than that, other than um, enjoying the little snow flurry we had this morning, um, the sun is shining, it's blue sky, and things are good. Thank you. Thank you, Director Jeffries. Uh, Director Stopper. Yes, hi, good evening again. Uh, Referencing the week on the hill, which was formerly known as day on the hill, but because of the this new world we're in right now, it turned into a week on the hill. So we're meeting with our 24th legislators, uh, Representative Chapman, Representative Theringer, and Senator Vanderweg on uh, this Friday, the 19th at 1030. And we have a, a cadre of students um, consisting of our of our two with uh, Olivia and Alyssa, and then uh, two from uh, Chemicum School District in Port Townsend. Um, School Board Director Jennifer James Wilson is coordinating that for us, uh, but we have about 15 minutes total time with them on Friday, and similar format as last year, except it will be virtual, uh, but we have them all in one room. And then there will be other meetings um, occurring with other uh, school districts um, with throughout our director area, which is you know, 15 school districts, um, Clown, Jefferson, uh, Kitsap, and the North Mason area. And uh, that's about it. And I'm uh, very glad that uh, Alyssa and, and Olivia can attend. And uh, I'll just say, if you have any um, setbacks um, connecting there on Friday, um, just uh, shoot an email and we'll, we'll make sure that you are connected there. And otherwise, thank you, Director Jeffrey, so for that information on crisis management. Uh, spent some time over the weekend reviewing that and is very much appreciative. Well, thank you all and uh, thank you. All right, thanks, uh, Director Stoffer, Director Pickens. Thank you. Um, and uh, you get to thank uh, Director Koo for um, for for bringing this up. I was um, planning on mentioning it. Stole a little of my thunder, which is obviously okay. But just uh, was so happy to find out uh, as our fellow uh, um, educators or our staff members are able to, to a lot of folks take advantage of getting getting vaccinated and see it opened up um, completely for for our educators. I think that's a huge step in the right direction for for not only. Uh, educators in our school district, but also all across the state. So just that added layer of, of protection that's so important. So it was uh, I'm glad to see that there was a, a, a big turnout over the over the past week or so. And uh, my thanks to the tribe for helping to, to helping to orchestrate that. Um, and I think it's, um, you know, like, as I said, definitely a step in the right direction. Um, did attend the uh, legislative planning meeting um, last week with uh, along with the uh, Director Stoffer and Director Jeffries, Dr. Prine. Um, looking forward to meeting with uh, legislators uh, the end of this week to talk talk a little bit about the priorities that we still have, um, and both both ones that affect things going on this year as well as next year as well. So um, I'm uh, gracious that uh, that Director Jeffries was uh, at the planning meeting, but did understand that there's only a limited amount of uh, board directors that can um, can can attend that. So hopefully I'm able to to, to fill his shoes on being a, the board director represented there. So um, to to advocate uh, to our legislators what the uh, students of SWIM need. So I'll uh, I'll be uh, trying my uh, my best in that regard. So um, other than that, that's all for me. 
Great, uh, thank you, Director Pickens. And uh, I, I don't have really anything to share. Everybody's pretty much shared it this evening. So uh, thanks to my uh, fellow directors for covering some good information. All right, uh, next up we have our uh, finance and enrollment report, Darlene. All right, so uh, first I'm gonna go over our um, budget status reports and they all look different now. So if Tracy will pull up the fund balance report, we'll go over, the, yeah, that one. Um, this is the report that shows all five of our funds, general fund, capital projects fund, debt service, ASB and transportation. And um, this is just an overview of the revenues and expenditures. Uh, to date in our ending, oh, I see, I forgot to change a date down here. The ending fund balance as of 2-28-21, not 1-31-28. Sorry about that. So general fund um, has an ending balance right now of 1,415,236. And capital projects fund is $611,670. Debt service fund has $69,750. ASB, $336. 1,671 and then transportation vehicle funds has $629,029. And then if Tracy, if you will go to, um, let's see, the, the general fund activity report. This is, this is the one that I just sent you today. Yes. OK, so this is this is the report that is broken down by revenues and expenditures in uh, each of our uh, fund areas for general funds. So regular instruction, special ed, CTE, um, it's broken down that way. And this is this is basically what you would see when if you were looking at our old budget status reports, you would see what we budgeted in 2020-21, um, what we've spent for the month, what we've spent for the year, and then over at the end, the percentages of where we are for the year. So for February, our total revenues are at 44.96%, which I'm actually, I have to say that I'm 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 happy with that at this point because we know that things are um, not how they normally would be in our school year, and we're missing um, quite a few revenues just because um, we can't have some of the activities that we normally have on our our school campus, and then our expenditures down below. And um, with our encumbrances for the rest of the year, which is mostly salaries and benefits and some open purchase orders, uh, we're at about almost 92% of our expenditures but that are budgeted. And then I added three lines, and, and thank you, Director Pickens, for uh, asking about this report, because I had this report, but um, when we're doing our, um, board meetings remotely, I can't access my Z drive. And so when I was updating my reports, I this one was completely off of my radar because it's brand new. So thank you for asking about this because this is the one that looks most closely to our budget status reports. So um, and then um, this is just for general funds or any fund amounts right now um, shows you 1,415,236. So um, keep in mind that November was um, one of the uh, lowest percentage rates for um, apportionment. And then coming up in the next couple months, we'll have higher percent um, come in for our apportionment. And also we'll be getting local levy dollars. So our local tax uh, dollars will be coming in and that will raise our fund balance back up again um, to be using to, to um, cover us through the end of August. So it looks very low right now. Um, one reason is, is that we are continuing to um, pay all salaries and, um, you know, we're 
we're covering expenditures for, you know, our kids as they're coming back to class, trying to use COVID um, ESSER funds for things that are specifically COVID, but a lot of things are just our regular day-to-day -day, um, expenditures. So things that we have to just keep on paying. Let's see. So Tracy, if you'll go to the, um, the last two reports, the general fund expense um, by activity. Mm -hmm. That one just breaks out all of the expenditures. Um, we, could, we break it down pretty far so that we know uh, which department our expenditures are coming out of. So that's just a, a breakdown of that in a different way. And then the last the last report, the summary by object, that is a breakdown. So you can see that was on that great big spreadsheet that I had. And at the bottom, the expenditures, you can see salaries for both certificated classified um, benefits, supplies and materials. That's that's basically the bottom of that of that spreadsheet. So you can see where we're at. Any questions on those four spreadsheets? OK, I'm I'm going to uh, move on. I have I have something else that I want to um, just bring up to the board um, so that you can be thinking about this. And um, I want a, it's very serious and it has to do with the great fact that we are receiving ESSER 1, ESSER 2, ESSER 3 is in the works. Um, we're receiving these grants. But in receiving these grants, when you build a budget, the revenues are great. You can you can take in as many revenues as you want. Um, you can project for your budget and it's as good as the second that you print it on paper and then you can go forth and have many more revenues or not as many revenues and it's completely fine. But on the expenditure side, um, OSPI requires that if you build a budget and you need to go one cent over that budget, that you must do a budget extension. And um, we've never had to do a budget extension at Squim School District, but because we are receiving these grants, we received ESSER 1 funding um, that monthly we're making claims against of $699,000. And then we just were approved for our ESSER 2 grant, which is um, two million dollars and we can start using that now but also we received a government emergency education relief um, grant for computer initiative and that was six hundred and seventy four thousand four hundred seventy two dollars we've already we've already paid that invoice and received that money so while they're a wash basically that big amount of money plus what we've um, claimed in ESSER funds has used our capacity that was built into our 2021 budget. So what that really means is, is in order for us to continue to use the new ESSER 2 grant that we were just approved for, we would need to do a budget extension so that we could so that we could use the funds and not at the last second um say oh my goodness we we can't do this now because we didn't do a budget extension so i'm just asking for you to be seriously thinking about this i i would like to do a budget extension for a million dollars and it would be a million dollars built on both the revenue side and the expenditure side and that would um take into account that any of the ESSER 2 funding that we are able to use between now and the end of um, the school year at August 31st, 2021, um, we would have that ability to be able to pay the invoices against the funding that we are receiving. So um, do you have any questions about that that I can answer before we actually, um, you know, I, I, I think our next board meeting um, I would I would like to try to ask you if you would approve that. So ask ask me questions now so that we are all on the same page. Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, you yeah. actually, yeah, you answered the question that I was about to ask, which is I just wanted to find out if that was something we could get done at the next board meeting. So um, thank you very much. And yeah, I think um, given given the circumstances, additional additional revenue coming in to, to, to meet where we're at, this is not a necessarily a bad problem to have. So i um, happy to, you know, let's that, let's do what it takes. And thank you for 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 addressing it. Yeah, thank you, um, Jim. Yes, uh, basically the same thing that Eric was uh, saying there. And uh, thank you for uh, bringing it um, up as a reminder for our attention because um, myself, I've been tracking it through WASDA and knew that it was going to be a question. And so uh, thank you for your due diligence there and uh, keeping us on track. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, better now. We don't have to um, use any of that. We can, you know, stay within the the first budget we, it's just that you that because if you get to a point where you're just going to spend one set extra then you're in a bind because you have to get your the board approval and ospi's approval before you can spend um anything over your original budget so um that's why we're i'm addressing this now because we do have the ability to use these esser grant funds uh larry Yeah, can you s summarize what the um, ESSER money can be used for? And do you have any idea about ESSER 3 and how much we might be getting? Um, sure. So uh, ESSER 1 funds, we um, are we've used it mostly for um, getting the programs up and running that we needed for remote learning. So Canvas and training and um, a lot of things around that supplies and materials that would be needed for remote learning. Um, you know, just a, a list of things like that. We have not used it for salary or benefit. We've used it for um, one stipend that was needed, but um, no salaries or benefits. And, and we made that decision uh, based on the fact that if you if you if you pay someone's salary and benefit with this grant that is here and then it's gone, then um, how do you continue to pay that staff member or does that staff member get to stay? So um, very careful to make sure that we're really responsible about how we spend the ESSER dollars. Um, ESSER 2 grant money is a little bit different. I think at ESSER 1 we can spend um, for lost revenue, ESSER, ESSER 2 funds, um, we cannot spend on lost revenue. So I think the rules are a little bit different. So this one's really brand new and I haven't, I haven't read up on this one about what all is allowed and not allowed. There is no supplanting um, rules with this one, supp supplement supplant. Um, but each one of them has a little bit different um, guidelines on it. And then the Government Emergency uh, Relief Computer Initiative that was $675,000. We um, purchased, we were able to purchase uh, computers and then we were able to get more money to purchase um, more, uh, more technology. So uh, that's what that is. ESSER 3. I, I'm not sure. ESSER 3 information is just just now coming out, and I haven't seen a lot of information that would um, give me any anything solid to tell you as far as like how much. So that's. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. OK, all right. Um, I also want to talk to you about um, the RFQ information, and um, I think Dr. Pine, I'm, she probably will have um, some things to say about it, but um, we have our request for qualifications for capital management services, and so what we've done is we've put an RFQ together. And the RFQ basically states that we are looking for um, 
project management services to assist the district in the renovation and improvements of school facilities district wide. And then in the next paragraph, um, it's all the information that was in um, the voting ballot. So it's the same, the same information that was put out there for all of our community to vote on. And um, so then companies that uh, want to put their information in, it's got a list of information that's requested. We'll uh, take those all in and we will um, go from there. So I, I do believe that we're going to put um, an ad in, some, a legal ad in uh, some different um, newspapers. I think the Peninsula Daily News, the Squim Gazette, the Seattle Daily Journal of Commerce. I think it will be on our website, our Facebook page. And um, when they want the RFQ document, they'll contact me and I'll get that to them. I know we've already had some interest, so we'll see how that goes. And I wish I would have had the, all of the dates sitting in front of me, but I grabbed this folder and brought it home and I didn't have my notes as far as dates. But I think I think that we've decided that this ends somewhere around the 19th of April. And then there, I know that there's a scoring list, so a, a group of us will go through each of them and use a, a scoring matrix and go from there. Um, I know that I'm, I'm supposed to talk about enrollment, but I do not have the enrollment report. So if Tracy sends it to me really quick, ah, there it is. Let me see if I can make it big enough to read. All right. Well, you can see where, where we are. It looks like um, February's enrollment, we're at 2,424 as um, compared to January of 2,447. And let's break down by school. So what we're hoping is, is that um, as we're bringing all of our students back to school and, and making our plan for uh, our fall startup of school and what that will look like, our enrollment will, um, you know, our, our students will start to come in. I'm really excited to see how many kindergartners and first graders come to school. So it's, uh, it um, hopefully will be a growing enrollment once again. All right, my very last thing is um, the ICOS report. And I know that um, every single year you guys see this ICOS report. This year it has not changed, and so we're required to annually bring this before the board, and it's the Asset Preservation Program. It's a, a whole workflow, um, and basically what it is, is it's a report on all of our buildings in our district, and um, the condition, the assessment of the condition of our buildings. So the last time that the assessment was done was while we had Vanner and McKinstry here doing our kitchen. They went around to all of our buildings, and so a lot of what's in the report is exactly what was there last year. And um, and then we're just watching because uh, it's on a, like a 30 year cycle. So you can see we're up at 22 years for the high school and the middle school. So um, I am assuming that when we have another uh, company come in, and we start doing things around our facilities with our capital projects that we'll be able to update this as we go. And um, it won't look like such a such a sad report. It will be uh, a lot of things will be new and and um, in working order. But um, the board resolution and the APS certification files, they've all been uploaded. It's a one time. Um, one time upload and that was that's already been done. And so the only thing for me to do was just to bring this to the board and, and let you know that it looks basically the same and things will probably start changing as soon as we start doing capital projects and we'll we'll keep this updated so that when it comes to the board next year, hopefully it looks a little bit different. Any questions on that? 
Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, sure uh, if there's any on that at this time, but I know Director Koo had his hand up uh, earlier. Oh, right sorry. Oh, you know what? Report. I can't I can't see it's okay. it's off the screen over there. With, OK, sorry about that, Brian. Hey, no worries. Um, I did have a couple questions that kind of skip scapped a couple items that is OK to ask now. Just sure, far away. Of course. OK, yes. um, the the first one and I, did, I hadn't seen the enrollment report, so I was just squinting to take a look at that. But am, am I correct in that we're looking at about a 200 student decline year over year? Is is that what you're seeing as well? The 20. Um, let's go back 20, to here. 24 and change or 26 and change to 24. Yeah, and yep. OK, you were right. Um, yes, I guess that's just making sure I got it straight in yeah. my head can yeah. you can you or jane or anyone else i guess comment on any strategy to addressing that and and i, I don't even know what i mean by addressing <laughs> other uh -huh. than you know what i mean just obviously we we want to keep yeah. our head count up for has has there been discussion about that or uh not yet um, well, you know, we're, we're keeping, of course, we're keeping a close eye on it and because we're in the middle of our budget process right now um, and starting to meet with um, principals, this is, you know, this is concerning, but we also don't want to get caught in um, what has happened with COVID this last year and our enrollment has dropped and we didn't budget for COVID and um so we're watching it really closely. I my last business manager meeting that I was in, some of the districts that had students coming back sooner than what we did, they were seeing their enrollment start to climb again. Like kids have decided that, um, or parents, however that that's working, that they want to put their student their kids back in school. Um, so I, I I think it's just an ongoing. You know, we're watching, talking a little bit about it, about budgeting, but I don't know about strategies for getting them back into the buildings. I wish we sure. had some really great ones. Well, I know I know the extended team is working on it, so I, that wasn't a loaded question. <laughs> I was just curious. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. I wish we all like had a, a great plan to help our students come back to school. Yeah. So the, the other question had to do with the RFQ, and yeah. if, if I'm understanding it correctly, what what type of firm are we looking to respond? And I guess where I'm driving at with that is in my, my brain, um, I know part of the capital funds would go towards something like technology upgrades, which is obviously something I'm sure our IT department would sing and dance about uh, if we were to commit assets there. But we also have facility upgrades, and so those two aren't mutually exclusive per se. But it seems like a pretty broad skill set, um, you know, if if that's even marginally accurate. So yeah. I, and I mean, I think, would we go ahead? Sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. I think the project management company would be, um, you know, I'm sure Jane can talk more to this, but a, a company that. Um, they oversee all those things. So when we get to the infrastructure and, and all the technology part, that um, that that the project management management would um, be able to put out the information for um, companies to put their bids in to complete the, those projects. And so they are, the, the management company is going to oversee that whole entire process. $15 million is a lot of money and, and um, it's better if one management company can kind of oversee all of those things and put those bids out there for those different um, companies to do those big projects. Um, um, Dr. Brian, do you have more to add to that? Dar yeah, Darlene, can I just jump in? So yeah. Brian, basically it's like a general contractor when you're building a house and then they hire all the subs and that's what the, um, the management company is for. So there is a broad range of um, projects, but we are hoping that they have um, experience in doing these types of projects and then they have subcontractors that they will um, hire out. Great, thank you. That makes perfect sense the way you both described it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it looks like uh, Larry, give your hand up. 
Yeah, thank you. Just a couple of quick questions. Um, well, concern about the declining enrollment in the past, that's hit our budget pretty hard. Um, I assume, are you, are we creating two budgets? One, if things go well, and one, if things, the enrollment stays low, is that what you're having to do? Um, well, what we've done, what we did was we created, I created several versions of a, of a budget for us to look over with, with um, different enrollment numbers. So I used just pure roll up of our classes, dropped off the um, seniors and then added kindergartners. And I built one based on February of 2020's enrollment to see what that would look like. I did one that was somewhere in the middle of February 2020 and 2021, just to see what that would look like. And then really what I what we ended up deciding was on version number four, which was um, the roll up of our current class numbers and then across the board um, in the classes that made the most sense we added, which what totaled about 100, 100 FTE. So we are staying on the low side and um you want to be as close as you can we we don't want to like budget too low and then have this big influx of enrollment and that's never great but in our situation right now that's a better that's a better option than a budgeting too high so we're we're trying to stay on the low side okay good um i know in your budget report you talked capital projects at about six hundred thousand. yes um Still in the budget. Is that been uh, planned for, or is that held in reserve just in case? Um, that was that was being held there, and so the first the first thing that was planned for is if we had to go forward and um, if we had to fix anything that that needed to be fixed. So you know, um, major heating systems. We had a major leak in the gym roof, those, that, those kinds of things. That's what that money is there for. But also in the back of our minds, knowing that the Gray Wolf sewer project was on um, happening in conversation, uh, th that's what that was being held there for. Okay, good. And then the project management firm, I assume, is there a ballpark uh, figure percentage management fee that that these um, various companies charge is is that mandated by state or is that just um, uh, they get to say what they charge and we get to pick um dr prine do you know that the answer to that question because I, I don't have you know, answer we'll have that. to wait and see what happens when the rfqs come in but um my experience has been that they um charge uh, they charge a fee based on the uh, scope of the project, but we'll see when they come in. I haven't done a capitals projects. I haven't done a capital projects um, RFQ for a few years, so things may have changed. And the, the project management company would handle the 15 million over the next several years to get the job done is to the life of the levy anyway. They they will work with our business office on the uh, yes, <clears throat> but we will be um, intimately involved with the um, management company to make sure that that they're spending our money properly. Yeah, okay. so like previously, um, like the building of the kitchen, um, there were many many meetings and there were weekly meetings uh, where we were all involved um, with the, ma the management clerk, Vanner, McKinstry, um, John, um, the, uh, the business office, a, a large group, a large group of people. And um, yeah, and closed tabs are, are kept on that. Okay, thank you. Okay, did I get everybody's hands? Because I can't, I can only uh, see. Jim, Jim has his hand up. Oh, Jim, sorry. That's okay. Thanks, Darlene. Uh, on our capital project, um, thank you for that overview and also uh, um, Jane for that input there. Very uh, helpful for our community and our, our uh, guests joining us tonight. Um, 
one question that is in my mind is when um, would we expect to see the uh, levy funds um, come to us because uh, th those two collection times of April and October. So even though we passed this capital projects levy, when can we expect to see some funds heading our way? Because uh, that would help uh, on when we can kind of start the project. Yeah, um, spring spring of 2022. So um, it's great that we're starting now so that we can have that all in place. Um, for when we start receiving those funds and it looks like Tracy's put it up there. But yeah, spring of 2022 is when it will it will start um, to be received by us. Great, thank you very much. And then uh, back on um, our enrollment. So two of the hot topics that uh, we'll be discussing with our legislators and this is hot topics that is a combination between WASA, which is a superintendent association, WASDA, and then, then your association, WASBO. And one of them is uh, House Bill 1476, um, which is the intent of that is to provide temporary stabilization funds to school districts if their funding loss due to enrollment declines. Um, and I've encouraged uh, colleagues and then uh, those in the audience to uh, look up that bill because you can uh, provide you can uh, do public comment in support of that. And then the other one is Senate Bill 5128, which is uh, with uh, student transportation to try to level the playing field for that to um, to keep those funds stabilized. So I just wanted to put those two plugs in there. But Darlene, thank you so much for tracking all of this and uh, keeping us. Uh, um, on track. All right, you're welcome. Thank you. All right, that's all I have. All right, thank you. Thank you, Darlene. And uh, all right, next up we have our superintendent report. Dr. Prime. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Dr. Prine, you're kind of echoing there a little bit. Is everyone else having issues with uh, hearing that? Our, yeah, um, they can't understand her. Educational yeah. professionals support Dr. staff, and every day Dr. we Ryan. have a little treat. And Go ahead, I muted her. Okay, Dr. Prine, uh, we're having difficulties. You're really breaking up a lot um, and uh, uh, not not able to hear pretty much all of what you're saying. Tracy, still really bad. Um, I might suggest just leaving and coming back in. I'm texting her. Thank you, Tracy. The wonders of technology sometimes.
Mr. Chair, I'll just note that despite technical difficulties, we still have 23 participants tonight. So that's uh, the good good side of technology. Well, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. And on that note as well, I'm just thinking we've been at this, what, almost uh, about a year now, and I you know, had this problem in that time frame. So, you know, we're due. <laughs> Pretty good track record. Try again, Dr. Prine. How about now? Can you hear me now? Definitely, but there's a little bit of scratchy sound. How about now? Very nice. Okay, I'm on my real computer. I apologize. We had the wave. It's a long story. And you guys don't care, but we had the wave people here because our internet went out last weekend and they just got here at six o'clock. So I was going off a hot spot, so I apologize. But I'm back on the computer. So very quickly, and I won't keep you because I know that I'm making us run a little bit behind. But on March 5th, we had our uh, professional learning day. And then all of last week, we had our professional educator support staff week that we got to celebrate. And we had a fun um we had fun things to do each day with them and then and they had little treats either on their desk or in their mailboxes so that was good and i'll tell you we just want to say thank you again a big shout out to them um we're still working out the glitches for a hybrid meeting for the board where we have an in-person teams meeting so it took me a minute to wrap my head around that but it would be an in-person teams meeting and we're looking at that for april possibly if we can get all the glitches worked out our district safety committee meeting meets every two weeks and we had our meeting last week and basically what we do is we talk about areas of each building that um, the contact for that building has noticed that needs to be um, looked at or you know if there are uh, tree roots sticking out we make sure that we take care of those kinds of items. Uh, Wellness Wednesday was last Wednesday and in next uh, Wednesday We'll have another Wellness Wednesday. Last week was work and, work and life balance, and next week is on nutrition, so that ought to be really fun. Um, we've already mentioned Day on the Hill, which is um, Friday, and so we just are appreciative we get to uh, do that. And I also would like to thank Brett Simkowski from the Sklalem Health Department. He has been amazing with our vaccinations. Friday afternoon, he said, Jane, we still have people that can come and get their vaccine. So if there's a school district member that has a spouse that hasn't been able to get theirs, please send them our way. We need arms. And so I just want to I just want to also have a huge shout out for for Brent and Port Angeles, for Dr. Barry both. They have really gone above and beyond to make sure that all the educators in Clallam County are vaccinated. So thank you very much. So that is my report tonight. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, and that was worth the wait. <laughs> Glad you're up and running and everything. So I uh, appreciate that. Yes. All right. Uh, so uh, on to business uh, board business. And first up is for the approval of the uh, RFQ public notice that we uh, had an opportunity to read. Director Koo. Yes, sir. I just moved to approve as presented and discussed. All right. Thank you. I'll second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any uh, further discussion on that? Well, I just, uh, I'll just add that, you know, I look forward to, um, you know, getting this in motion. Uh, it's a, our next step in the process of uh, getting, you know, all these things we've needed fixed for a long time uh, completed. So uh, looking forward to getting those uh, RFQs in and, and seeing what we're working with and uh, getting some work done uh, next year. Uh, Director Pickens. Yeah, you pretty much just said exactly what I was going to say. I just wanted to say happy to happy to see some things for us to start this process. Yep. Awesome. All right. Uh, with that said, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. 
All right, and the next we just have uh, several first readings uh, of our um, policies that we've discussed. Uh, is there any that anybody feels a need to um, go over or, or look at at this time? Uh, Larry. Yeah, it looks like um, that policy 2413, we're revisiting that one, if I'm correct. Yeah. And it looks like it's still in uh, more of a rough draft form. Is that true? Or am I? did I look at the wrong copy? Tracy, would you? Uh, I guess my question is, is, ready, is it ready for first reading? Uh, yes. Well, we're, this is first reading today, so we're not do, we're not doing approvals today. I uh, know. Is it ready for first reading? Gotcha. Yes, Tracy, yeah, Tracy, can you pull up the marked up copy, please? Yeah. I hope you said marked up. <laughs> yes, I did. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, I did. Thank you. So that's what has, <clears throat> excuse me, that is what has changed from the last policy. And then I took the updated policy to uh, Mr. Riccobeni and Mr. Langston to make sure that this uh, matched what we were doing. And they said, yes, it was. So. Sounds good. And I believe we have that clean copy on here as yeah. well. We do. Ah, got it. Just so you could note the changes. Perfect. Thank you, Tracy. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. It looks good. All right. Anything else? That's a list. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of work and thank you, Tracy, again for all the work you've done on this and to the rest of the board and you know, for going through these uh, monthly. All right. Well, with that said, anybody with anything for the good of the order? Director Koo. Yes, thank you, sir. I should have said this during board comments, um, so Thank you for the accommodation, but just appreciate the folks who take the time to reach out to the board. Um, I know sometimes it may feel like there's uh, um, you're hearing back from only one person when you emailed a lot, but that's just uh, our protocols and how we're doing things. But as we're doing things virtually and without the face to face, whites of the eyes conversations, uh, just really appreciate people taking the time to do that and their uh, understanding of the limitations of that interface at this time. Absolutely, thank you, uh, Brian, for, for uh, that reminder as well. You know, and we do our very best, and I would say uh, Dr. Prine is uh, wonderful at uh, responding back to uh, any, any questions or emails that we get and, um, you know, a lot of times they are sent her way because there are a lot more appropriate information than she would have that one of us that uh, I would not have. Uh, so, but uh, between Dr. Prine and myself, we do everything we can to make sure we respond to every comment that we get. So appreciate that. Uh, all right. Uh, with that, just a reminder, our next regular board meeting will be on the 12th of April because we have uh, spring break coming up here. So um, just a reminder of that and then we have a policy workshop after that. So uh, that's it for this evening. Nobody else has anything uh, for the good of the order, then uh, let's all have a wonderful, wonderful evening. We got a little extra daylight now, so uh, it's nice and clear outside. Go outside and enjoy the last bit of sunshine uh, for the night. Thank night you. All. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, all. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks, everybody.